okay hello everyone welcome to our channel food with sunny and in this video i will be talking about one of the medium type problems of the lead code and the problem name is maximum eraser value and the index number you can see over here is 1695 and uh, let me give it a like over here actually this problem is really an interesting problem it requires the concept of two pointers and if you are unaware about that go and check it out on the internet and you will find a lot of resources about that okay so you can see c++ program to add two pointers technique and here is the article on the gsp if you are not aware about that otherwise let's come over this and let's discuss this problem and let's together build it up the solution to this problem with the help of two pointers you can also solve uh, like uh, in various other methods are also rather than two pointers but two pointers is one of the best technique to solve such type of problems including the concept of sub arrays and all that okay so without wasting much time let's jump over to the problem statement we have been given an array of positive integers nums nums is actually the array name and we want to erase a sub array containing only the unique elements okay so we have to choose any sub array containing the unique elements unique elements basically signify if you choose a certain sub array let's call it as s then all the elements in that sub array must have the frequency count equal to 1 and the score you get by erasing the sub array that is that sub array that we have chosen now is equal to the sum of its elements that is chosen sub array has a score exactly equal to the sum of the elements present in that sub array return the maximum score we can get by erasing exactly one sub array that is we have to choose only one sub array and that sub array should contain only the unique elements and we, uh, the sub array that we have chosen has the sum exactly equal to the maximum score that we can obtain by choosing exactly any one of the sub array in the actual array containing only the unique elements okay and here is the definition of sub array is given Okay, so I'm not going to discuss over the definition of the sub array as it is pretty much obvious thing that everyone should know. So here are the examples that is given over here. I will also discuss this problem with the help of examples to have a better clarity over this problem. All right, for now, uh, let's discuss over the constraints. You can see the nums length that is the array length that we have been given to us can go at most 10 power 5 and the every array value is around 10 power 4. So this, um, let's uh, brood over your mind over this constraint like uh, whether this constraint is going to help us or not. Yes, it will help us. It is always signifying that uh, the constraints is around 10 power 5. So we cannot think for of O of n squared solutions. It will fail. So we must think of an O of n solution or O of n log n solution. Obviously, O of n log n solution is, uh, is not going to work over here. So we should, uh, that is, it may work, but... Uh, the good solution that we can obtain is of O of N solution. So we must think for that. Okay. So let's uh, move over to the example. And we will together find out the best solution for this problem. Let's move further. Okay. So suppose this is the example that I have took, uh, taken as an array. And we need to find what is the maximum uh, subarray sum such that that subarray contains only unique elements. Okay. So let's start uh, iterating from the leftmost side of the array. That is, if we take only 5, you can see still I have the only unique elements of the subarray and the length of the subarray is now 1. And what about taking 2 elements? Still we have the unique elements. Like you can see, the frequency of 5 in this subarray is still 1. Frequency of 2 is still 1. And the sum that we obtained till now is 7. 5 plus 2, 7. And what about extending this array to this position? Still, we have only the unique elements you can easily see. And the sum that we are obtained is 8. Can we extend this sub array to one more position to the right? Let's uh, do over that and let's check it out. Yes. But now you can see the array does not contain the unique elements. That is 5, 2, 1, 2. The frequency of 2 is now 2. It means that uh, we have to reduce our sub array size. Now, what is the optimal way to reduce that sub array size? Can we reduce that is can we reduce this pointer that is let's call this pointer as i and my the left pointer is j j is pointing at 0 and i is pointing at uh, some random index and the index at this position is what 0 1 2 3 so i is now pointing at 3 and j is pointing at 0 now just tell me one thing that uh, if we found a 
sub array where there is a repetition of element that is here you can see in the range j to i i have a repeating element 2 that has a frequency exactly equal to 2 can we extend this i to the right such that we have the sub array containing only the distinct element obviously not because if i will extend i to the value equal to 4 okay let me write as i equal to 4 you can easily see still i will have the frequency of this 2 as 2 so we must care that rather than incrementing your i now we must increment my g so what i'm telling is to stop incrementing i at this position that is uh, my i will still remain at this position and my j will become at this position okay now previously what is the maximum uh, sum that we have already obtained you can easily see maximum sum that we have already obtained is at to this position 5 2 and 1 that is 8 we have already obtained some 8 now when when we try to include this 2 my sub array would become uh, not valid sub array that is it it, it, it is containing one distinct uh, it is containing a repeating element we must have to avoid that so rather than incrementing i the most optimal way as i have already explained is to increment my g so if i will try to increment my g you can see my new sub array is now at this position does it have a increment that does it have a repeat element or not yes you can see two uh, the frequency of two is still two and that is each element must have a frequency exactly equal to one so what is the optimal case now increment i or increment g it is obvious to increment g okay so now you can see the in the range inclusive from j to i i have a elements whose frequency is exactly equal to one that is every element frequency now the uh, this sub array contains only the unique elements what is the sum of this array sum of this sub array that is sum of this sub array is coming out to be three and uh, what is the maximum sum taken so far maximum sum taken so far is eight and my current sum is three so what is the maximum of these two ones it is coming out to be eight so up to i equal to this position that is up to i equal to this position what is my maximum answer it is still coming out to be 8 so in overall i am just now declaring the approach to solve this problem you can easily see the very first method that i have taken over here is to take two pointers i and g and uh, you can see the reason behind to take two pointers is uh, suppose if i will iterate from starting up to the end of this array and whenever I found a repeating element, it means that we need to avoid such condition and that condition can be avoided by taking another pointer who is pointing to the next position of the previously occurred element. That is if my 2 has already occurred over here, so, so what is my next position that I should have to consider that? The next position that I should have to consider that is this position. That is after this position of this 2. So this is going to be really a really important thing so it can be maintained with the help of two pointers so talking about the approach what i'm going to do is start iterating i from zero up to n minus one and take another pointer j which is initially initialized as zero and uh, what i'm going to do is just store the frequency of every element and it can be easily done by taking a hash table so we will maintain a hash table to store the frequency of the elements and every time when i will start incrementing my i i will increment the frequency of the element occurred at that position of the i and uh, in the rain in the this for loop for i equal to zero to i equal to n minus one let's say i have the hash table named as mp then i will increment the frequency of this nums of i and note that nums is actually the array okay so I will increment its frequency. Now there might be some case that I am at this position is still from in the range J to I, I still have not the all the elements being unique. So how I can check that? You can easily see what is the range length of this uh, sub array from J to I. It is I minus J plus one. That is this amount. I minus J plus one. This, uh, this is the length of the sub array. And if we demand that this length must be exactly equal to the 
original length and uh, length and original length are basically if all the elements in that subarray are unique my actual length and my new length must be same that is uh, uh, I'm just talking about the distinct elements okay so if all the elements are going to be distinct this i minus j plus 1 is exactly equal to the size of the hash table because uh, the hash table stores only the distinct elements and what about when we consider when we have a repeating element when we have a repeating element this value is not going to be equal to the size of this map so we have derived the conclusion that uh, whenever i minus j plus 1 this value is not equal to this map dot size then what i am going to do is i am going to increment my i or g it is obvious that i have already said increment your g so that the size of the subarray get produced and we will reach a certain state such that the new subarray will have a length exactly equal to the mp dot size map dot size which is uh, basically signifying that we have a new subarray having the length or having all the elements being unique that's why i'm getting the length of the subarray exactly coinciding with the size of the hash table so whenever this doesn't hold i need to increment my g and finally after doing this condition we have a i minus j plus 1 exactly equal to the map dot size then uh, we can easily say i can just uh, maximize our sum by the current sum that is let's say my sum is current sum is s and my maximum sum is a i will take max of s comma a so this, uh, so this is the entire approach that i am going to go uh, follow over that so let's move over, uh, move over to the code to understand this in the best possible way so let's move further okay so here is the code you are going to see uh, so i have taken the j pointer as zero so i will mark it down as right one more thing left pointer so another answer is uh, the storing answer storing maximum sum okay and uh, this sum is uh, storing current sum now i wear the hash table okay so hash table is basically storing the frequencies of the storing frequencies of all the elements in the current range j to i okay so j to i both inclusive so i have iterated for every element of this array and i have just incremented the frequency over here you can easily see mp of nums of i plus plus and if i will uh, make it over the another line then it is like that also i have incremented my current sum with the current uh, array value now i have iterated uh, up to i minus j plus 1 not equal to map dot size since map stores the only the distinct elements and if i minus j plus 1 is not equal to map dot size i need to increment my g so what i have done is i have decremented the nums of j frequency from the hash table one frequency and also decremented the sum and if we have reached a certain state such that the map of nums of j is exactly equal to zero and uh, there is not even a single entry of nums of j is present over the map i will erase its entry from the map as obvious and increment my g finally and after doing this while loop i will have the sum uh, exactly equal to the sum of the all the elements present in my current subarray containing only the unique elements so i need to just take it out like that answer equals max of answer comma sum and finally return the answer for all the subarrays that have the unique elements and uh, let's say it has a sum s then i will maximize my answer with that sum s okay so this is the entire code coding part so uh, this is also accepted so if you have any doubts do let me know in the comment section of the video and i will ask the viewers to like this video share this video and do subscribe to youtube channel for latest updates thank you for watching this video